Good morning. This is Ma Terry and Miss Lucy from the really, really cold southern Utah part of the United States. And Miss Lucy is wearing her pink fur coat that she wore to the Nomadland tapings. And unfortunately, they cut out all of our scenes. I'm so sad about that for her. But today we're going to talk about which vehicle is right for you or basically what I found out through the years because I've been doing this since the 70s which is car camping. So here's what I found out. Number one, because I'm not mechanically inclined, reliability is really important to me. Um, I love warranties. I love warranties. Um, and then the second thing, what size vehicle should I go with? And we're going to talk about cargo carriers, rooftop racks, and all that other stuff. And uh, so I had a Ford brand new Ford 30 years ago, and it leaked around the windows. And now it's brand new. Within the first week it rained and we took it into a Ford dealership and they said, that's not covered. The windows covered for cracks, but not the seals around it. So Ford to me has always been a headache. Um, I had a 92 Chevy van, which was really, really reliable, but um, it was getting old and it had to go. So why didn't I buy a new Chevy? the difference between Toyota and Chevy is Toyota had more bells and whistles and I love bells and whistles and Chevy didn't offer the same type of warranty. I think Chevy at the time had a two year, 24,000 mile warranty or something lame like that, where Toyota, even though it was two years old, I could extend the warranty for an additional five years for $2,000. Now I know that sounds like a lot of money, but if you're like me and you break down in the middle of nowhere, and you get to the mechanic and he says, oh, it's your power steering pump and it's connected to the Reba Statter and you need to change all these plugs and blah, 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 and $3,000. Okay, $2,000 for a warranty makes sense for me. Um, I don't have the ability to become mechanically inclined because I have a traumatic brain injury, which limits a lot of my functionality. So I didn't mind paying the extra $2,000. Uh, the Volkswagen bus, uh, it was a 99 and uh, they only would uh, warranty it for up to 20 years. So, um, and the 20th year is when the power steering pump broke and me not knowing enough. Uh, then uh, when they replaced the power steering pump, mysteriously, the engine failed because the timing chain got caught up in it or something like that. $10,000, it had to be flat bed towed to uh, San Bernardino. So uh, like I said, warranty, warranty, warranty is my secret for happiness. All right, so I wanted a vehicle with every bell and whistle. I wanted LADAR, a backup camera, because let me tell you, the backup camera, I park like crap. Parallel parking in the city, uh-uh. So this backup camera is so precise. I mean, I can get within that red line and no, I'm not gonna hit that car. You know, the Toyota is so dependable for things like that. I wanted side window monitors. When you're driving a bigger van, you have a lot of blind spots. So these side window monitors let me know when someone's in my blind spot. The little uh, mirror on the side lights up orange. So that, that helps, that helps an awful lot. Uh, the one thing I demanded from my Toyota dealer is I wanted uh, a sunroof. Why a sunroof? Because it has circulation. Now my guy, uh, Jimmy, he would say, oh, but this van's $5,000 cheaper. And I'm like, Jimmy, it has to have a sunroof. Well, the thing was there was only one vehicle on the lot with a sunroof and 10 other Toyotas without it. And everybody wanted the sunroof. I made it perfectly clear to Jimmy that I am not buying a vehicle without a sunroof. So he saw that was my priority and I got the only vehicle on the lot with a sunroof. And of course this was during COVID when uh, used cars were hard to find. All right. So Ma Terry now has a sunroof. All right. I needed space on the roof for my solar panel and some vehicles, you know, the solar panels stick out like a sore thumb. I also, what I wanted was uh, space for the solar panel and the sunroof, but I also wanted the roof rack that would camouflage my uh, solar panel. So uh, the space worked out perfectly on the Toyota Sienna. All right, it had to be big enough to carry my two tents. All right, why two tents? I have the clam, which I love. I'll show you later. Um, Bob has a video 
out there from Chief RV Living, and he sets, he doesn't set up the clamshell. He has his 20 year old, you know, full of energy set up the clamshell in 45 seconds, and she runs around it real quick. Okay, I'm 60 years old. I will have a heart attack doing that, and I didn't have the strength to set it up like she set it up. So I'm gonna show you the simple, no stress way of sitting, setting up the clamshell tent. You know, you got to, you got to modify, modify, modify. All right. So the clamshell does set up in 45 seconds. And the reason why I love my clamshell tent is, um, if I want to do art projects out in the middle of the woods, it's great. You know, it's six by six on the interior. So two of us can be working on art projects and never bump into each other. Um, the other thing is in the evening time, if we want to watch the sunset, bug free. You know, it is the swamp according to MASH. So uh, we do have our martinis and some bring their wine and we sit there and watch a beautiful sunset. But I also carry a smaller hydraulic tent and this hydraulic tent sets up in three seconds. It's wonderful and I will show you that one. So why the hydraulic tent? Because some places that I go to, um, they accept tent camping but they won't let you be in the car. Some places accept tent camping and they will let you be in the car. So I have this hydraulic tent to uh, set up. It sets up in three seconds. So it's real easy. You're going to love this when I show it to you. And, uh, you know, I, then I sneak stealth camp in my car. I don't want to be a bare veto. Okay. And that's what I think of tent camping, especially in something that small in the middle of Yosemite. I think it's crazy. All right. I also needed a long enough space to carry my hiking poles, my walking sticks, and I also love to carry my scooter. Yeah, I have a, a scooter that kids have, but it's adult size. Okay, and I also needed a space for my 100 watt folding panel. That sucker is big. So I'll show you where all that sets up. All right, so I have a few big things that I carry. My next point of a vehicle is when I'm on the East Coast, I could have three or four rainy days in a row. Being in the Prius sucked when it constantly rained. I mean, the only thing we could do was go to an indoor mall and then being in all that dampness for three days, uh, I caught a cold. Well, during the rainy season, I would stay at hotels, which cost a lot of money. Then I got sick. Can you imagine getting sick in a Prius, you know, where you had the flu for three days, a little bit of diarrhea, a little bit of throwing up. Hotel room, definitely not fun in a Prius. Well, in the Toyota Sienna, I can get sick and I, I like that. Um, so it saves me a lot of money for hotel rooms. Okay, so the rainstorms were horrible. The cold and draftiness was horrible and uh, paying for the hotel rooms was horrible. Um, yeah, my point is I had to pay for hotel rooms because the Prius, it was too tiny to, uh, you know, manage all the different types of weather that I experienced and also all the types of sickness I can experience. Um, in the Prius, I couldn't get up and stretch. Now true, I can't stand up in my Toyota Sienna, but I can do a lot of yoga positions. So I never am cramped. All right. Also, I like rudimentary cooking. All right, if you spend three or four days on the road and breakfast, lunch, and dinner are restaurants, number one, that's costly, but number two, you're gonna get a little heavier. And number three, it's just not healthy. So I like to be in control of my diet. And in my Sienna, I have, of course, my little butane stove. I have my little Hot Logic Mini, and we're gonna go into my uh, solar cooking stuff. I absolutely love my Ghost Sun, and I'll be demonstrating that soon. So um, yeah, I do like eating at restaurants, but let's say you eat at the cheapest restaurants, uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like I show, you know, I can have a McMuffin, a cup of coffee, two McMuffins for $3. You do that during the day, that's $10 a day, and uh, that's $300 a month. But I like a nice lunch. So that's a $10 lunch. $20 a day is $600 a month. Restaurants add up quickly, and so do hotels. So that's why I try avoiding that. Um, I simplify cooking. I mean, I do uh, basic reheats, basic meals and everything. Sometimes in my Hot Logic Mini, I'll cook drumsticks or whatever, but it's cheap enough at Sam's Club or Walmart to get a whole rotisserie chicken for like $4.50, $4.99. All right. So my van with the bigger size saves me for a hotel room, saves me restaurant experiences. 
but I also wanted to bring along some of my hobbies. I love doing my hobbies, especially when it's raining outside. During when it's pleasant weather, I'm either hiking, I, I love shopping, I like gambling and everything. Um, but when it's raining outside, uh, number one, I don't like running to the campground bathroom. So uh, I have a daytime bathroom and a nighttime bathroom, which we'll get into in the future. But uh, during the daytime, I want to be busy. I want to shop flea markets, festivals. I want to be doing everything. And at nighttime, I want to just be able to sleep in it, have my snacks, have my martini bar, whatever. What? Are you getting a little on coffee? We're almost done. So <laughs> she's so cool funny okay so my van's purpose is to take me traveling and exploring and having fun with miss lucy i want to go to restaurants i want to go to museums i want to eat out sometimes i want to experience things i want to dig for diamonds in arkansas dig for shark's teeth um sometimes yes i do have to rent a bicycle but i don't want to carry a bike because um a, you know i may be at the beach and need a beach cruiser or like up in Brian's head, coming down the mountain, you need a mountain racing bike. So those are two different kinds of bikes. And then doing city pass, I may need a different bike. I don't rent bikes often and I don't rent kayaks often, but if I do, um, it's nice to have. Now let's talk about, some people say, all right, so I got a smaller vehicle, I'm gonna put on a cargo carrier or you know, the cargo carrier on the roof or the cargo carrier on the back two things. The cargo carrier on the roof is going to uh, hurt your gas mileage. The one in the rear, okay, so I in my Volkswagen bus, I had a wireless camera. Like I said, I park like crap. All right, so when you put on a cargo carrier, if you have your camera in your car, you either have to hardwire a camera, unless you don't want your camera, hardwire a camera to your dashboard, or you have to go wireless, which so many of my friends have had so many problems. And yes, my wireless was um, professionally done. So I don't like uh, those uh, cargo carriers for that reason and, and the other reason. And I don't like bike racks either. To me, if I can't carry it in the van, I don't want it. Because anytime you have a roof rack or a cargo carrier, sorry, either you have a roof rack or a cargo carrier, then even though I stay in the nicest places in California, someone thinks, hey, let me steal that van off the back, th that bike off the back of the van. All right, or let me go into the roof rack. Now, is that what you want? It's two in the morning and you hear somebody on the roof of your car stealing stuff? What are you gonna do? And maybe there's two or three guys out there stealing your stuff. I call it an attractive nuisance. And that's why I don't add anything to my vehicle. Number one, it ruins my mile, mileage, miles per gallon. And number two, it's an attractive nuisance, which just screams in some places in Southern California, even though they're nice places, hey, you know, time for crime. What they do is they know like in certain places in California, uh, why are you gonna rob the poor people? So they will actually drive to the nicer neighborhoods and rob the pe more upscale people. I can't say richer because, you know, whether you're middle class or lower class, I don't think anybody's richer. All right. Those are just a few of my thoughts on why I picked out the Toyota Sienna. Um, if you can add anything, please uh, comment below what your experience has been. And of course, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. All right. And if you can think of anything I can uh, videotape for you to help you, uh, add it in the comments below. All right. Bye from Ma Terry and Miss Lucy.